uh, talent plays a very little, little role here. It's all about your motivation to succeed, your motivation to avoid distractions. Because once you fall into this, coming out of this requires uh, willpower, and that you have to you have to avoid falling for these traps. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Arjuna's uh, new series which is Success Tips from Topper, Toppers Tips. In this series, we interview toppers from various examinations such as JEE, Advanced Mains, NEET, GATE and many other exams. Here, uh, these toppers come and discuss various topics on how to succeed and how they were able to succeed using these uh, ideas. I am Murari, uh, I am final year undergraduate student at IIT Madras. And I'm also a volunteer for Arjuna Group, uh, which aims uh, to, I mean, in spreading of culture of excellence and ethics in the spirit of selfless service. So today we have with us uh, Ronit Nanwani, who, who, who got All India rank of 331 in IIT JEE Advanced 2021. He currently studies in second year IIT Khadakpur, Computer Science and Engineering Department. Uh, he hails from Pune and. Thank you, Ronit, for being with us, and we welcome you for today's show. Thank you. So let's start off today's discussion. Ronit, just tell us, how was your experience when you saw your JE Advanced rank? How, how good did you uh, feel? Okay. So it was, I was really happy after seeing the result. In fact, I would say I was quite relieved because I think I had messed up my paper a bit. So. The days in between the paper and the result, I was quite anxious. Like, what rank did I get? What uh, uh, with the marks I scored? So that anxiety finally uh, was relieved after seeing the result. Basically, very happy. Yeah, in short, very happy. Great. So, Ronit. Uh, what would we be discussing today? Uh, tell the viewers, uh, what topic have you chosen to discuss with us today? Okay, so today I'll be uh, talking about the mistakes one should avoid while uh, while the JE preparation. So, yeah. Okay, great. So, according to you, uh, what are the common mistakes which students uh, which may do, uh, especially the viewers? Can you just elaborate on those? What do you think about those? Okay, so I'll divide this in two parts, like the mistakes which I had made during my JE preparation and what I observed, my friend, which what mistakes my friends made. So starting with my mistakes, so generally I used to procrastinate when it comes to inorganic chemistry. Like I used to study for let's say 15 to 20 minutes, then I would feel exhausted and then I would say that I'll put it off till, till tomorrow, I'll do the rest of the chapter. The next day and in this way it doesn't uh, you know you cannot effectively cover up the syllabus before the test so in organic chemistry uh, was a struggle for me initially and this putting off it uh, putting it off till tomorrow was not the right thing to do and i wouldn't suggest the juniors to do this so uh, once you start keep in mind what you have to finish finish that the day itself and I would suggest you dedicate one hour every day for inorganic chemistry and because what generally students think is that inorganic chemistry would not uh, have a high weightage in the advanced paper but uh, you can see the previous year's paper each of the three parts of, of chemistry have almost the same weightage so inorganic chemistry is also important and you have to do it nicely. So a uh, proper timetable for inorganic chemistry would help you. And the other mistake uh, which I had made till 9th or 10th standard, I was a keen sports enthusiast. So I used to play regularly for let's say two hours. And you no know, school days, we can afford giving two hours a day for sports because there's not much studies in schools. So coming into 11th standard, I took some advice from seniors that told me that you have to invest six to eight hours a day for studies. So I thought that 
uh, skipping the sports activities i could save two hours a day so that would be better if i invest those two hours in my studies so but i don't think this would really help completely skipping the sports activities or any other physical uh, training which you do would uh, in fact uh, in a would affect you in a negative way so 30 to 45 minutes of physical exercise daily would certainly help you the reason being let's say you are exhausted with your studies so you can go out for 30 to 45 minutes play any sports you like do yoga meditation and even you can pursue your hobbies let's say someone likes playing some musical instrument or singing so you can pursue those as well it will rejuvenate you and it will make the rest of the day more productive for you so do not think that if i invest 30 to 45 minutes there i would be wasting that time in fact that is the best use of time you will be doing and uh, some mistakes which i observed that my friends made and they fall for distraction traps like social media apps instagram facebook you generally see students making accounts on these after 10 standard so this is something one should avoid uh, you have to note this point that our, the 10th standard board exams are not the only thing there's still a long way to go you have to still fight and avoid falling for these distractions traps in the early stages of 10th standard and uh, some other mistakes uh, include the paper analysis part so let's say you have written a GE advanced paper which means two papers a day, 9 to 12 and 2 to 5. So including the break, let's say it's effectively eight hours at a stretch. Generally, you will feel exhausted after the paper and think that, okay, I'll analyze this test maybe the next weekend or let's say three, three or four days later when I'm free. But uh, I don't recommend this. You should start analyzing the paper on the same day itself in the evening or probably the next day because what you had thought while solving the questions in the paper, let's say you have made some mistake in the paper, what you had thought, what you had, what was your approach of solving that question is fresh in your mind. And what is the right way of solving it? You can look through the solution and then, in fact, first give it an attempt as to why it went wrong. If you cannot come up with a solution, you can look for it and then you can compare what you did wrong. and maintain a notebook let's say where you write the mistake and what was the right solution to it so these things should remain fresh in your mind so in j advance basically there's nothing that comes out of syllabus it's basically a form of question which they twist and ask in some tricky way so those forms should be well registered in your mind so that is what paper analysis will help you so you have to do that perfectly on the same day or probably the next day not uh, later than that and also some mistakes students make is they are a bit stubborn with questions with tough questions so they will invest a lot of time let's say in let's say you are solving a question it's quite tough it's from a very good book you have heard about that book from various seniors and stuff so you generally do not tend to give up if it's a tough question, you will try for one hour, let's say two hours, probably in the start when there's more time in the standard, you will invest the entire day in solving just a single question. So I would not recommend you to do this. Investing time is good, like one hour, one and a half hour, and do it in breaks. Let's say you are solving the question, invest 35 to 40 minutes. If you're not able to do it, take a break, solve something else, study something else, and then come back to it invest another one hour let's say if you're not able to come up with a solution and then after let's say one and a half or two hours you can look up for the solution it's not wrong in looking up for the solution because you'll learn something from it in what way it was solved so it's never the uh, wrong thing to look for a solution but give it a sufficient try not that you are stuck in that question for one or two days one and a half to two hours is more than enough and then you can look up for the solution uh, so these were some things i wanted to mention which generally students uh, students make these mistakes uh, the question was like 
as i asked it was common mistakes and entire whenever you were speaking i was laughing because i could completely relate all of those the mistakes i was again and again making especially when you said uh, you know solving a question not leaving it i yeah. remember solving a mathematics question entire day i did not get the solution and uh, <laughs> usually that yeah. and we do it even try to do it in exam as well that's the yeah. yeah in exams you cannot invest so much time you have to leave it let's say after 5 minutes you cannot just stick to that question there are you can score in other easy questions as well so in exam it's all a game of marks you don't have to be stubborn you have to leaving a question is not a bad thing you can analyze it after the paper yeah my teacher used to say leave your ego uh, when yeah sorry while saying. going to the examination hall you have to leave your ego behind great and one more thing which i observed was uh, interesting thing is this government and schools no, they allow students to have mobile phones uh, after 10th standard till st- 10th standard we do not have mobiles with us they are, mm-hmm. we are not allowed to take our mobiles with us because we have school buses etc but suddenly yeah. when we come to 11th and 12th unless and until it's narayana chaitanya who have hostels we do not we are not allowed to have mobiles so we are allowed to have mobiles so therefore this as you were saying uh, this social media addictions will start in 11th and 12th and mm-hmm. may get into peak so yeah. that is one of the major problems as you were mentioning yeah great thanks ronita now let's move to next question how to keep balance as you are speaking no uh, you as you are speaking you know uh, uh, you are saying about common mistakes which students were doing and now let's discuss say we have many things in our daily uh, daily life when we are pre- preparing that is uh, coaching might have a good number of hours for classes physics chemistry and mathematics and even biology for some students say and you need to give same amount or more extra work for your self studies as well because that is important and as you were also mentioning do not leave extra curricular activities which are important for your life so how do you balance and uh, what is your take on that can you explain that? okay yeah so in my case i used to have my classes 3 hours every day in the evening so it was not a long time but i i know other institutes have the classes let's say from 9 to 5 or probably 6 so it's quite a hectic day for them so first i'll start with their case let's say you have classes from 9 to 6 after the classes you are quite exhausted i would say don't get back to studies disconnect from studies take a break go for uh, let's say some sports activity or for uh, pursue your hobbies play guitar or play some musical instrument or sing so disconnecting from studies for a short while would really help you to get back to it you will feel rejuvenated to get back and the rest of the day would be productive if you don't give those 35 to 40 minutes then you would feel exhausted for the rest of the day in fact you will not do any productive work so taking that break is really important and after that you can do one or two hours of self study because if your classes are from 9 to 6 i assume that most of your studies is done in classes as only and in the other case like it was in my case i had to have only 3 hours a day so i had ample time but also a uh, thing to remember if you have a lot of time we also tend to waste a lot of time so you have to follow a strict timetable a uh, daily timetable a weekly timetable you can write it on your board i used to write it on my whiteboard my timetable for the day and i used to strictly follow it you can include breaks in those obviously you have to include breaks and uh, yeah following a timetable in this case is really important otherwise you would waste a lot of time if you are getting a lot of time okay yeah if especially people who have lesser number of classes they have when if they go home and it will be much difficult uh, did you ever study in classrooms itself like when you in your coaching institutes maybe did that ever happen uh, probably when we had double lectures we had used to have breaks in between so i used to study during that time or in fact during that time i mostly used to spend time with my friends like let's say we had 6 hours classes and there was a 15 to 20 minutes break after 
a three hour class so spend time with your friends and do not uh, go too much into your studies there you just relax for that time also uh, a thing to mention like for those uh, students who have classes from 9 to 6 like if you get back to studies would feel burnt out after some time and uh, je is not a sprint race in fact it's a marathon so you have to have that tempo high you have to keep yourself motivated throughout this two years you cannot feel burnt out after let's say 3 or 4 months so taking breaks would surely help you to not get burnt out okay uh, yeah So, only one, two more questions, and then uh, just uh, the next one would be: uh, You have seen friends who are going to IIT. Is probably many of your friends who were in eleventh and twelfth went to IIT, and some were unfortunate or couldn't make it uh, due to various reasons. Can you differentiate between these two people? Uh, between who got into IITs and who did not get into IITs? Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint race. So. even i observed this in my coaching institute in the initial few months everyone is really enthusiastic because it's a transition from 10 to 12 it's completely new for all so everyone is enthusiastic they are solving various books from i don't know how many books they are solving so uh, the problem is you have to maintain that enthusiasm throughout these two years it's not that just the first Three or four months, you are working hard, and then you are uh, relaxing. It's not like that. So you have to be motivated throughout these years, and also the point which I mentioned of solving various books. So, and motivation does not mean like you have to solve five to ten books for a single subject. That's not what I mean. Uh, uh, generally, students tend to do that because they are quite confused from where to solve. Some senior is suggesting that this book, some is suggesting the other book. So stick to one or two books, follow it quite strictly. Even if you finish that book, you might you can come back and solve it all over again, or at least the important questions. So that is what I would like to say about this point. And also, generally, students also think that. uh let's say he is scoring good marks so he is talented he is a born genius like that but it's a uh, talent plays a very little, little role here it's all about your motivation to succeed your motivation to avoid distractions and uh, yeah it's a marathon not a sprint it is it is yeah okay thanks uh, ronit like we'll go to the last part of the discussion uh what was your experience of reading the art of concentration book and uh, would you recommend it to the students and yeah yeah sure so this book is extremely nice book in fact not only for the ones who are preparing for competitive exams but also uh for students like me who are in college who are in who are fresh in college so generally after je preparation also students fall for distraction traps and i was also one of them so i really needed some guidance in this regard so this book really helped me the summary and application points given after every chapter you can apply it to your life the application points are really good and you you will see the changes in your life and one point which i would mention from the book is you have to be conscious of your distractions like in these social media apps and these cases you are unconscious you don't know how time fl- flies you have to be conscious you have to be uh, conscious about your distractions so that is one point to remember and surely this book is a must read for obviously uh, students preparing for competitive exams and also freshers in college as well okay uh, thanks ronit for your like many we have discussed in length over 20 minutes and i am pretty sure it was good discussion i mean we had ourselves we had good discussion at surely to help students who are hearing it yeah and as ronit was mentioning this book especially when even like 10th after 10th there is one stage when uh, we get in get into that mobile zone and after 12th we are free because we are into iits or nits 
again we may have chance to get into distractions so yeah. people who are watching this art of concentration in the age of distraction uh, is written by amal m das uh, this can be a game changer uh, this goes into the root cause analysis of you know uh, what is distraction what is causing distraction uh, do we have control over the distractions or do we or don't we have any like is is it something uh, which, which we cannot control or do we have control over all of this are very explained in very simple language in a novel format and students who want to get benefited should buy this book and read this book uh, the description for you know this to buy this book would be put in the description box of this video please uh, take the opportunity buy it read it and tell us your experience in comments to various videos whichever videos you watch uh, of this series so with that i again thank ronit for your time i mean uh, it's been great speaking to you ronit and uh, we loved having you with us thank you thank you thanks a lot thank you with that uh, we'll sign off for today's video thank you bye